Several people have sent me this article titled, Christians point to genetics breakthroughs to show that Adam and Eve are not incompatible with evolution. Of course, this is published by Fox News, and when you look through the article, it's full of a lot of really ridiculous things. First of all, it says here that some scientists are making this claim, and scientists is a clickable link, so that should take you to the source, right? Nope. You click on that, and it takes you to the Fox News science section. It turns out this whole argument is coming from this guy, Dr. S. Joshua Swamidas, in his new book, The Genealogical Adam and Eve. And when you look for that on Amazon.com, you'll see that it's listed in the Bible study and reference section. So I'm not saying that this guy isn't a scientist, I'm saying that this isn't a scientific work. They then go on to summarize Swamidas' claims here by saying that, yeah, humans evolved, but then also God made Adam and Eve out of dust in a rib and integrated them into all of our family trees, so they're not necessarily where we all come from, they're just everybody's long-lost aunt and uncle. Then they try to grant the book legitimacy by saying that it's making waves in scientific circles, and they point to this organization called BioLogos, which is a Christian advocacy group dedicated to trying to weave the models of creationism and evolution together. And they didn't actually come comment on this story, Fox News just points out that they're deleting their old articles that say contradictory things. Then they point to William Lane Craig. I'm not going to waste my time explaining why I don't care what William Lane Craig says. They point to Reasons to Believe, which is another Christian advocacy group dedicated to blending faith and science. They point to Michael Murray, who's a Christian philosophy professor. None of these people have anything interesting to say about genetics. Then they quote this guy, Nathan Lentz, who to Fox's credit is a biology professor. And he starts his statement by saying that there isn't any evidence, historical or scientific, for Adam and Eve. But he goes on to say that, yeah, of course, genetics does point to common ancestry, and Fox is like, see? Even though that isn't what that means. <laughs> the only actual criticism in this article comes from people like Dr. Nathaniel Jeanson, who is a biologist who works for Answers in Genesis, and his whole complaint is that this book isn't creationist enough. Oh, and there's also a video that accompanies this article, and it's hosted by Lauren Green, who is the one who went viral for not being able to comprehend why a religious historian who's also Muslim would dare write a book about Jesus, and Dr. Nathan Ross, who is an astrophysicist and a creationist and a professional apologist. And of course, the whole video is just a lesson in apologetics about how the word day in Genesis doesn't really mean what you think it means. Overall, I give this article a science teacher challenge level 1 out of 10. It's not a science article. It's nonsense written to pander to one audience while stirring up clicks from another, and that's why it's published here in the Christianity section of foxnews.com. Yes, I did click on that link, and the top story is an opinion piece by the living embodiment of a white picket fence, both in symbolism and intelligence, Tucker Carlson, titled how Christianity is being replaced by the cult of coronavirus, which is something so insanely problematic I couldn't even begin to cover it here. Thanks so much for watching. Don't believe anything in this stupid article. Have an awesome night. I